Hey everyone, this week I have been living with this 2024 Chrysler Pacifica Pinnacle PHEV. This is a plug-in hybrid minivan from Chrysler. It gets 32 miles of electric only range out of a 6.6 .6 kilowatt hour battery, and then it swaps to a hybrid powertrain. MSRP on this is just shy of $62,000. So let's go ahead and take you for a quick walk around it. We'll dive into the exterior impressions, interior impressions, and then we'll take it for a spin. This vehicle is finished in red hot pearl. Very nice color for a minivan. I haven't reviewed a minivan before, so this is new for me. Haven't really been in any other minivans other than a town and country back in the day. But I mean, for a minivan, it looks pretty nice. Do you have 18 inch wheels wrapped in Nexon Enpriz tires? LED projector headlamps, turn signals all the way around, and fog lamps as well. This is the charge port. This thing can charge on a level one charger completely in about 12 hours, and then if you have a level two charger, just over two hours. So, charging time is not bad at all. As with Pretty much any minivan nowadays, it does have motorized sliding doors on the left and right, and can also be opened on the key fob as well. Very nice interior color. We'll go ahead and hop back here real quick. Very comfortable seats. I love this ex interior color um, in here, and uh, these are Napa leather as well, so the quality in here is very, very premium. You do get rear seat infotainment as well, very cool um, you just tap it to wake it up this has amazon fire tv built in which is really cool let's go ahead and shut this door here obviously you have to connect it to a network and then you know you connect it to your phone and things like that and uh you know watch youtube download some things on it it's pretty responsive too i mean this is actually a really good touchscreen. it's almost like an ipad in the back of the seat you have an aux port here, an HDMI port, and a uh, USB-C port back here as well. Um, and if I have my PlayStation 5, I bet I can just plug it back in here um, and, you know, play some video games. It's pretty cool. Go ahead and put these down for now. Do you have climate up here? A very nice headliner. Very premium feeling. The climate controls are over there. Very nice sunroof as well. These seats do recline pretty far back as well, so you can really lounge back here and be comfortable. And the third row has some pillows that are like super plush and very comfortable. And just lay back and relax with these pillows. I love it. It is so comfortable. This would be an ultimate road trip van, especially as a kid. You also got peasant blockers here as well. Plenty of space back here. Down here you do get a nice space to put some things and a couple cup holders. I can't believe I forgot to film this, but I should probably climb in the third row for you guys to show you how much leg room you get back here. I can't believe I forgot to film this. Very easy ingress though. I'm six foot, driver's seat's in the, or this seat is in its position. And uh, I got plenty of leg room back here, a lot more than a third row SUV cup holders not bad not bad at all quick shot of the dash very sharp let's go ahead and take a look at that trunk power lift gate this is one thing i like about minivans rather than like three row suvs is you have a ton of cargo space back here and everybody knows you know the whole you know stone go type deal with these um you know chrysler minivans you can just fold these seats down very easily Get those pillows out of there and you have a completely flat load floor back there and you can even fold those second row seats up i just seen a instagram reel today actually of this exact minivan um with the seats folded up farther and they put a i think a double size mat air mattress back here or the people in the reel were able to watch a drive-in movie out of the back of this which is actually pretty freaking cool uh, be an excellent camping car too pretty easy as well to just fold it up they are a little heavy but you know what it's it's fine do i wish it was power especially for sixty one thousand dollars yeah but this isn't that bad they actually make it pretty easy but yeah look at all this cargo space you have back here i think the total cargo space 
um, you have with the third row folded down is 140 cubic feet. So quite a bit. 12 volt outlet over there. And then over here you do have your you know, fix a flat tire service kit and your charger as well, level one charger. So again, that power lift gate. You do have smart key access on the doors. Let's go ahead and take a look at what's Made some weird noises. Let's go ahead and take a look at what's under the hood. So under the hood here is a 3.6 liter Pentastar V6 that you've seen for years now in pretty much every Galantis product. It has 260 combined horsepower with the hybrid system and is mated to a CVT. Very smooth powertrain here, pretty reliable powertrain as well as we've seen through the years. Um, so yeah, not bad at all. Outside of the 32 miles of electric only range, this thing gets a combined miles a gallon of 30. So it's a pretty efficient powertrain as well. Very light hood. I will say, um, when the engine is not on and it's like super hot out, the air conditioning compressor, you know, that runs off the electricity is so loud. It is insanely loud. Do you get these stow and go, I forget what the acronym is, uh, roof racks as well. I believe that is an option. So you can mount some stuff up there. Pretty cool. Look at these seats, guys. Dual power, heated and ventilated as well. Super comfortable. Very easy ingress and egress. I mean, it's a minivan. Do have memory options as well. And this thing has a 20 speaker Harman Kardon stereo system, which we will be testing here shortly. Up front here, you do have a nice gauge cluster with a digital display in the middle. Very nice infotainment system as well with a 360 reverse camera. Very, very nice Apple CarPlay, Android Auto that is wireless as well. Um, it is a little laggy, and for some reason, I can't get the EV page to work. It just sits there. Oh, now it works. Okay, well, that's the first time it worked ever. Oh, look at this. Well, we're going to figure this one out together. You can, you know, control the, you know, driving or the schedule to charge. That's pretty cool. This is re a really cool party trick of this minivan as well, is there's something called a fam cam. There's a camera right up there that you can keep an eye on your kids and, you know, see what they're doing. But the wireless CarPlay works flawlessly in this, um, which is actually pretty nice. Do you have your Prindle there and some stereo dual zone climate controls there, as well as a screen off button, which is so nice to see. A lot of gloss black plastic here. I do not particularly care for that. This van only has 895 miles on it and it's already scratched and smudged up. Um, they do provide a microfiber cloth as well for you to use, but guys, really black, pla black plastic, especially in a minivan, which kids are literally just going to tear up. Really? Come on. Could have done better than that. But coming down through here, you do get a Blu-ray player as well. Um, if you, you know, put a movie in here, you can watch it, and uh, it will mirror everything on the displays on the back of the seats as well, which is pretty cool. Do get a wireless charger here and a couple, um, you know, USB ports and USB-C ports and an aux port as well. Works really nice. No problems at all with that this week. A couple cup holders. Already seen the center console with a change holder. 12-volt outlet and a USB port. Over here, you do get a nice size glove box, auto dimming rear view mirror, home link as well up here, and illuminated visor mirrors. Do get a sunglasses holder as well. Really, really like the interior quality of this. I mean, besides the gloss splash plastic here, but um, it is actually a very nice minivan. It better be for sixty-one thousand dollars. Now, uh, I did not cover that you do. This does qualify for the seventy-five hundred dollar um, EV tax credit as well. Um, obviously, that varies on location, so check with your dealer on that. So, um, you know, might knock that sixty-two thousand dollar MSRP down pretty substantially. 
I think that about covers all of the tech and things in this minivan. So let's go ahead and take this for a spin. And before we do that, please be sure to like the video. Um, it helps me out as a smaller creator and pushes this video out to others so that they can see it. And uh, you guys all know how that YouTube algorithm works. And if you enjoyed it even more than that, please consider subscribing as well. I publish car reviews weekly, and uh, I got a pretty strong lineup for you guys coming soon. I appreciate all the continued support and the comments. I really enjoy reading comments, guys. So, um, you know, leave a comment whether you like the car, whether you don't like the car. Um, I just love reading them a lot and responding to them. So with all that being said, let's go ahead and take this for a spin. I can't quite figure out a way. You know, sometimes you don't just want to use the battery. You want to conserve the battery for later. And, you know, some of the other plug-in hybrids, I was able to, you know press like a hold charge button and just use the engine to just putz around in and save the battery for later um, I can't figure out a way to do that on this car um, it's not in the settings it's not buried in the infotainment I have to apologize a little bit for the sun there um, I shot this video a little bit later than what I wanted to but lots of torque it's front wheel drive and then if you know the electric motors don't provide enough torque for you, the engine will automatically kick in to get you the power that you need to get going. Now, we're on a gravel road. Uh, these roads are absolutely trash around my area, and uh, it does have a fair bit of road noise for the price point. Um, I wish it was a little quieter, but it rides really good over bumps and expansion joints on bridges. transition from hybrid uh, or the transition from electric to the motor is pretty seamless I don't know why these are not more popular you know you, well maybe the price here is a little little high but uh, you know especially over like a three row SUV I'd much rather drive one of these you know it could be the styling but this is a way more practical no rattles no squeaks on the interior this week I have been averaging 32 miles a gallon combined I still work a nine to five job, so um, I was able to just do my daily commutes to work and back on electric, which is actually nice. But on this smooth road surface here, you can definitely hear a lot of tire noise. You honestly don't really hear a lot of wind noise, but I really wish there was a little bit more sound deadening. Uh, at least on the wheel wells or maybe a different set of tires would would help and you do have adaptive cruise control as well just controlled right here on the steering wheel you have the option to select you know adaptive cruise control or regular cruise control which i like it's very simple very intuitive and easy to use change your following distance here and there's a bunch of different menus you can scroll through um, for the center stack i mean you've you've seen this on other um, you know dodge products it's pretty much the standard corporate um, you know, Stellantis infotainment and, you know, center gauge cluster there. No surprises. Super customizable. I know you can put stuff in different corners as well. I'll tell you what, the gas pedal does take a little bit to getting used to. It's very sensitive. Uh, kind of like it's, kind of like, feels like it's in sport mode all the time. I can't find a drive mode selector on, on this vehicle, but, uh, it, you know, it's very touchy. First time I got in here, I about shot through the windshield, or the, the back seat. Just launching myself into the uh, almost the garage door. Visibility is pretty darn good as well. You have blind spot monitoring in the mirrors. I like having these little windows there for visibility as well. I mean, you can check over your shoulder, and there's you know a massive window that you can see out of. Even the rear view is not bad at all. Everything's nice and bright. Arms reach. Very easy to adjust if needed. Lots of physical controls, which I like to see. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah, it, uh, it, 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 it's a minivan. It's not going to handle really well. But uh, tons of understeer there. These tires were barking. These electric motors are actually quite powerful. You know, usually with these PHEVs, I tend to find that the electric motors are kind of sluggish. Um, around town and you know depend on a lot on the uh, gas motor to really get you going but this does actually a pretty good job has enough power to
get out of its own way. It doesn't feel super heavy at all. A little bummed that this does not have lane tracing assist um, or you know a lane centering um, system. A little bit lacking compared to the competition on that. But the adaptive cruise control system works really nicely. In the meantime, let's go ahead and test the Harman Kardon sound system. 20 speakers. pretty nicely. Really good sound system. It's probably a high B tier sound system. It's really good. I can't imagine like you know popping a Blu-ray in here. And uh, sorry guys, if I made you motion sick going back and forth, I want to make sure I don't get blasted. But I'd love to you know pop a movie in here and experience what the sound would be like. It'd be pretty crazy. It's really good. Really impressive. See, really the only real big detriment this vehicle has is like the tire noise. It's pretty loud for the price point. It's not as loud as my Honda Civic, but uh, you know, for the price, definitely expect some refinement there. I'd love to drive a Toyota Sienna and really compare those. I know um, they have like literally recliners in the back seat, um, which is pretty cool. Love to compare and contrast those. All right. Let's do a quick zero to 60. Come to a complete stop. And floor. Does take its sweet time for sure. Definitely not the fastest out there. But honestly, just putzing around town and stuff, it's it's fine. Could use some more, but it's fine. Actually, there is one thing that's kind of annoying, and that is the heated and ventilated seat controls are tied to the infotainment. I neglected to mention that. Um, I wish there were physical buttons down through here. There's space for them, guys. Uh, that would have been so nice to have. Um, I know I talked about having physical controls everywhere, but that is one thing that's kind of missing that's kind of a bummer. This does have a heated steering wheel as well. And these ventilated seats are actually quite good. One of the better ones I've tested. I just got out of a $68,000 Lexus that the ventilated seats just made a bunch of noise and did absolutely nothing. And this one's actually doing a really good job pulling me down. Actually, this, 
Yeah. It's this is up there with one of the best ventilated seats I've used to date. Overall, you know, first impressions, this Chrysler Pacifica minivan is pretty darn nice. Ventilated seats are pretty loud, though. Not bad for a minivan. You do get remote start on the key fob and, you know, able to open the sliding doors, which is nice. Pretty cool. All right, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed the POV drive of the 2024 Chrysler Pacifica Pinnacle. Special thanks to Stellantis for sending me this vehicle to review this week. I actually quite enjoyed my time in it. Not bad at all. Be sure to like and subscribe, and uh, we'll go ahead and see you in the next video. Take care, everybody.